algorithmic trading. Now, what good are all the concepts and trading strategies we've talked about up until this point if we cannot implement them in live markets and especially use Python and, and the computing power it offers to assist in trade execution? Well, that's exactly what I aim to answer for in this video where we are going to be building an algorithmic trading system in Python to help us execute trades using these different strategies. In any case, with live trading, we're going to need a broker to help facilitate our trades. So in this case, I'm using interactive brokers. They offer relatively low account minimums, but more importantly, they also offer a Python API. Now, I've had a couple of years of experience with the Java API, and very recently they, they released a Python version of their API, and that's what we're going to be using today to build out our trading system. So before we get started, you are going to need an Interactive Brokers account, and you're going to need to install the latest version of their API gateway. And this is what allows Python to connect to Interactive Brokers and manage your account. Now, we don't actually need a fully funded account. We, we obviously would if we wanted to engage in live trading, but to get started with the API, you can just use the paper trading option. In addition to creating an account and installing the API gateway, you're going to need to install the Python API. To do that, you can just run a pip install on IB API and you'll have everything that you need to get started. Before we actually get started coding, I want to offer some insight into the structure of the API and the way that we send and receive information from interactive brokers. There are two main classes in the Interactive Brokers Python API, and the first one is the E wrapper class, and the second one is the E client class. Now, the server responds to Python in the form of callback methods within the E wrapper class. And Python requests data from the server from the e client class and it creates a closed form loop where e client requests information from the server and the server responds in the form of callback methods in the e wrapper class. So this is how we're going to be sending and receiving data to and from the server. And this is where we can do things like request market data or execute trades and request account details all of that is done in the e client class and all of the information is sent to callback methods in the e wrapper class so now that you have a general idea of the structure of the api we can go ahead and get started coding our own implementation so for starters we need to implement or rather import the e wrapper and e client classes so i'm going to say from ib api dot wrapper import e wrapper from ibapi.client import e client. And these are the two classes that are going to be responsible for sending and receiving data from the server. So we're going to create our own subclasses for custom implementations of uh, server requests and uh, data handling. So for starters, I'll say class API controller is a subclass of e wrapper. And what that means is within this class, we're going to be receiving data from the server. And I'm just going to leave a blank constructor for now. We also need to build out a custom implementation of the e client class. So I'm gonna say class API socket is a subclass of e client. And unlike the E wrapper subclass, we actually need to take a parameter. And in this case, the parameter is actually going to be the E wrapper class. So the reason for this is because when we send requests to the server, we need to have a destination for the data that the server wishes to respond with. And in this case, that is going to be our instance of the e wrapper class or the API controller. So we're going to call the constructor of the e client class and we are going to feed it the wrapper instance. Now that we have the subclasses of the e wrapper and e client class set up to handle our custom implementations, we can build out another class that's responsible for essentially housing both components and we're going to call that class the trading application 
And the trading application is going to take an API controller and an API socket. So essentially what I mean by this is the trading application class is going to be able to send and receive data from the server. So we're also going to need to initialize the constructors from the superclasses within the trading application constructor. So we're going to call the API controllers constructor. We are going to call the API sockets constructor. And if you recall, the API socket takes a wrapper. And in this case, the wrapper is just the instance of the trading application class. So we can just say the wrapper is equal to self. Alrighty, so now that we've effectively built out uh, a class capable of sending and receiving data from interactive brokers, we need to talk about the way in which requests are handled. Now, whenever a request for data is made through the eClient class, it gets added to a queue. And that queue is cleared every single time the run function is called. And so the way that that works is we can say, hey, let's let's request some market data on an equity and we will also request account updates. And those two things are going to sit in the queue until the run function is called. And then the, the queue will execute each request and send the data to the appropriate callback methods. Now, we don't want to continue to call run every single time we make a request. So what we can do is we can persist the run function on its own thread using uh, the, the concepts of multi-threading, using the concept of multi-threading. So to accomplish this, we're going to need to import threading. And as soon as we call the constructors for the API controller and API socket respectively, we can create a new thread T and target the run function. And then as soon as we create that thread, we can start it. And what we're effectively doing is saying every single time we put a request in the, the queue, it's going to be executed. And that is going to operate independently or concurrently of other processes within our algorithmic trading system. Now we pretty much have everything we need to get a proof of connection from the server. And to do that, we're gonna create a callback method in our eWrapper subclass. And this callback method is going to be called connect back. And this callback method is going to be pinged when a successful connection is instantiated between the Python uh, script and the server. So whenever the connection is instantiated, we're just going to print connected. In order to ping a callback function or to receive data from the server, we need to make a request from the eClient class. Now, the eClient class already has all of these functions built in. So in this case, we want to connect to the server. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and call self.connect and this is referencing the API socket subclass of the E client, which houses all of these request functions. Now, we are using the API gateway, the Interactive Brokers API gateway. So we're going to give it the hosts, which in this case is localhost or 127.0.0.1. The port is 4002 for default uh, paper trading, and the client ID will be zero. Also keep in mind that to accept a connection, you may need to enable connections within your IB gateway or trader workstation settings under API. And it's relatively straightforward, it's just a checkbox, but there you can also actually change the port in which you connect through the local host. Alrighty, so I just booted up my IB API gateway. I logged into the paper trader and 
To connect successfully from Python to Interactive Brokers, all I have to do is create an instance of this trading application class. If I go ahead and I run this, as you can see, the callback method is pinged by the server and we get connected. This lays the groundwork for everything that we could possibly imagine within algorithmic trading. We can automate trade execution, we can automate trade reporting, we can automate strategies, we can automate maintaining delta neutral positions. We, we can do almost anything within this structure uh, and this connection to our interactive brokers account.